This video is sponsored by Aura. More on them at the end of the video. Good. So I'm thinking I need to go find a sawzall real quick. Yeah, cut those off. How stuck is it on that big piling up front? It's literally sitting right on the tip of it. Okay. Um, I wouldn't dare push it and have a whole boat fall on me or anything like that. Yeah. But right now, my guess, I'm almost afraid that when I cut that, if that's actually what's holding it. Yeah, so we can tie off to another piling. Yeah. Let me, uh, give me one second to call it real quick on something. Okay. What do you say? He's got to run to his shed and grab one. Oh, okay. Because he's got to take pictures of it to document for yep. their side anyway. Um. I just got to call my boss back. We just got to get final approval. Take you guys with me. At least we'll try. See if this camera will cooperate today. Looks like it will. Yeah, then right now I'm just we're just gonna put it in the slip. Yeah, okay. And then once I find out, I wanted to take the Sarah Bay, but they're not open. So no I'm one's open with yeah. this. Here's the they third one already. Five feet of water in the shop. Oh wow. So they're gonna be out for months. Yeah. Um, all their equipment's damaged. I can Saw imagine. Load up on the, yeah. I don't know if they've called somebody, but. <laughs> yeah, I was just down in Siesta Key doing a job down there already. It's probably half a dozen boats that are sitting up on land and another yeah. dozen that are kind of like this, yeah. just half off a lift. Yeah, we got two sitting out on Bay Drive, just sitting there. Came from the other side of the bay. That's the thing, the water just came up. Yeah. and I mean, it was high enough to put the boat up on yeah. there. You know? But I untied all my dog lines. Okay. Um, that one, yeah, that'll be the fine. rear one took the cleat with it, so that's still got a cleat tied to it. Yeah, okay. Um, but if you look from, well, from this side, it's probably the easiest. To me, it looks like I'm going to have to cut. Yeah, so it definitely ties this stern off to a piling over here just to keep it from falling while you're cutting right. it. Right, and then, you know, I can't tell how wedged it is. 
Yeah, kind of hard to tell. But if it's so wedged that that's actually what's holding it in place, I'm a little worried when I cut it. That's why I'll probably tie off to like yeah. this piling. All right. And then, uh, my slip is the one to the left of, or the right. So this is my slip here. Where the bow is? Yeah. Okay. Glad he moved his boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess we're just gonna wait and see. We still gotta get approval from insurance for this. And it kinda all depends on if we can actually cut those pilings or not. They're tiny, so it shouldn't be a problem. One eternity later. Thank you. <laughs> How many feet of water were in there, Todd? Do you know? What do you mean? In the building itself. Uh, about 18, 20 inches. Oof. All right. How the hell am I going to get out there? I can slide the bow over of my boat if you want to lean off from that. that drop so it's gonna drop right on there. I was gonna say it might be safer to do it from the bow of the boat yeah. anyway. Now his boat. Well what I what I'm looking at is if what if we pull just pull it off of here. It's gonna crash this anyways. Now if you don't care about saving it we can do that. It's I got this is pulled up, I mean yeah, can, it's gonna be trashed. I can pull the bow over. I don't, however you do it, you know. I'm trying to do the least damage to your dock, but oh, I, it's like I said, that it's beyond that. Okay. I mean, I got I got so much dock damage in here right now, it really doesn't matter anymore. I mean, I can try to cut it from over here. I just don't. Well, I don't want you standing on the dock trying to cut it. Yeah, I don't know. That's what it's, I don't want. Both gonna come right either. towards you. Um. And your bow is rather high. I mean, he'd be almost laying upside down trying to do that. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> I think just pull it off right there. Okay. It's come crashing Let's down. See what I get. Pull back. Not sure how much of this you guys are gonna be able to see. I think if he pulls it, if he pulls it that way, then it just pulls it that way. I think the only reason he didn't do any damage is because he uh come out with Oh, okay. We're going to go off this piling to the bow cleat on the starboard side.
should or? Yeah, I was gonna use the come alongs. Okay. The current thing, thing about it. Not quite. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it would go. Push that back out. Yeah. Answer time. Nowadays, it's pretty easy to do a quick Google search for a name and find out quite a lot of info about someone. It's scary how much of my personal information is accessible, especially since I would consider myself pretty limited in the personal data I put out there. However, data brokers collect and then sell your information to scammers, spammers, advertisers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, cell phone, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there and easy to find. That's why I've started using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. Aura does this all for me. 
And best of all, I don't have to download several different apps just because the company couldn't keep my data secure. To help you secure your data, Aura is offering my viewers a 14-day free trial at my special link down in the description at aura.com slash fgcms. Now back to the video and what I do best.